the diagram represents a steel tube with wall thickness W, which is very small. See this tiny little W? Comparison with the diameter of the tube, which is pretty big. The tube is under tension, caused by a force T parallel to the axis of the tube. So you see this tension force here pulling, another tension force here pulling. You are pulling the tube, so it's under stress. To reduce the stress though, it is proposed that we thicken the wall. Hmm, nice suggestion. The tube diameter and the tension being constant, which wall thickness will make the stress half? You know what, this is a, this is a question about stress in the Young Modulus chapter. So maybe we should start off with an equation for stress itself. You know, not, I mean, not stress in real life, but stress in the material. So equation for stress uh, for this scenario is going to be, let's see, the symbol we use for stress is what? Sigma. Stress is the force when you act on the material, either pulling or squashing it together, divided by the cross-sectional area of that material. Let's zoom in a little bit on this setup here. What is the cross-section area though? If you look very closely, there is a... Uh, well, you cannot imagine that this, this is a see-through tube, uh, like you can look through the middle, it's a hole. And this is kind of just inside the tube. You could look inside there and it's empty. So your cross-section area that you will want to use is this tiny slither of uh, area, cross-section area, which is going to be the one that we will use in our equation to calculate the stress. Wow, I cannot draw properly. Okay, there we go. I Ah, be, be, be. <laughs> there we go. All right, that's our cross-section area, a little highlight there. How will we find that cross-section area? Here's what method might get you a bit stuck. If you think about it and you say, hey, I can find the area of a circle and I cut out the area inside here. This one, maybe I say, oh, I take a bigger area of circle minus a smaller area of circle. If you try this method, you will find yourself very stuck because for some reason, we don't have enough information to do this method properly and smoothly. So there's another method you need to know how to use for this. It's a quite an interesting one. So we cannot use circle area minus circle area to get that cross section. I mean, you could if you have values, but for this case, they only want a ratio. So I'm going to do some magic, <laughs> not magic. I'm going to do some arts and craft. I'm going to take a scissor and I will say I will cut along this. Let's say we cut here, put a scissors, cut along the dotted line and unravel out this tube. It's kind of like saying if I, if I have a roll like this, I cut and then I unravel it into a flat, nice rectangle, like a book. Okay, let's draw it out, this unraveling. So stage one, I cut, I open it up a little bit more and it becomes like that. So I've opened up my cylinder. My highlighted area is still the same though. It's this one right here, the cross-section area that we are going to use in our equation on the left side right there. So now we need to find out what, what, how do we get these values in terms of this new rectangular cuboid. The width is going to be this thickness right here. It's a bit small, hard to see. Uh, how about the length? What is this length? That length previously was, let's see, what was the previous length here? That is the circumference of a circle. Should we use the external or internal? You know, it. there is a small difference, but it's negligible. Why? Because the wall thickness is small in comparison with the diameter. So we just assume, ah, yeah, we just take the, we'll just use the circumference 2 pi r or 2 pi, yeah, 2 pi r to find that. So this is going to be, 2 pi r or the diameter in terms of diameter also works anyway let's put it all together now so stress the force if you see tension on one end and the other end we do not take two tension we just take one tension because tension we consider it distributed along the entire object when you're pulling something apart so just take one as the force tension uh, and the cross-section area is going to be an area of a rectangle down on the right side here so it'll be 2 pi r times w. 2 pi r w. Okay, what is constant here? We have 
uh, tube diameter constant, so radius is constant, tension being constant. So I can say at the end of the day, all this is constant. This is also constant. All we have is sigma stress is proportional to 1 over the width of that wall. So which wall will give half the stress? Ah, my shortcut method, which I like to use oftentimes, is just to use the, the proportionality relationship on the left side. So I'm going to redraw this. 1 over w. We want half the stress, right? So this is going to be half, and I multiply half on this side. Hence, if you look at the bottom now, the width has to be 2w. So the best choice here is 2w as the answer. Okay, so this method is what they are actually wanting us to look at because this wall is very thin in comparison to the diameter. So we can use this unraveling into a cube, rectangle cube kind of method. And we cannot use the circle method to minus two, the area of two circles. All right, so that's all for this video. Hope that was helpful in helping you understand this. Any questions, any other methods, do let us know in the comments down below. So that's all for this video. See you in the next one.